everyone. <clears throat> hey, everybody. Can you hear me? I just want to make sure that my audio is good before we get started. I am still kind of sick. <laughs> so you guys will just have to bear with me. Wonderful, yay. All right, so we are back with part two <clears throat> of my playthrough of Coteries of New York. Um, we finally learned that we're a vampire, and people have started to give me some answers. <laughs> so let's just go ahead and let's just jump right into it. Let's see here. How's that music level for y'all? All right, let's do this. Run night four, how many total nights are there? <clears throat> Once more darkness, ooh. Darkness falls upon the city. You wake up, same as you have these past few nights, in a windowless room. As you pry open the reinforced steel door, you look out the window to see, invariably, a sky bereft of sunlight, and then it hits you. The hunger. We have been a- <coughs> We really have been a hungry boy this whole game. <clears throat> My voice has been fine all morning. Apparently, it decided- Oh, stream time? Let's not work. <laughs> All right. For a moment, you let yourself wonder if there will ever come a night when it's just not there. Given what you've learned thus far, you probably have as much of a chance of kickstarting your heart with jumper cables. That's intense. <laughs> but yeah, um, that's part of what I like about uh, Tabletop Vampire is that your hunger is never really gone unless you full on kill the person. Um, you always have at least one level in hunger, which is just, I really like the new hunger mechanics because that's a great way to kind of portray it, that it's, it's always going to be with you no matter what. You lock the apartment behind you and head over to Sophie's apartment. You did promise to call on her. Might as well not keep the lady waiting. And hey, what else are you going to do? I love that this game just starts with, like, you're a really boring person. <laughs> call M. She's probably worried. At least she will be when she actually tries to give you a call, which might not happen for a few more weeks, months, if she's busy doing press for her new piece. You could try to track down your sire, if the sheriff hasn't done that already. After all, he did buy your painting. There has to be a money trail, right? But even if so, what would you say to him? It's true, like, if you find your deadbeat dad that essentially killed you, what do you say? These thoughts put you in a weird mood. Yeah, I imagine. It's a strange sensation to walk the crowded streets, same as you have so many times before. But feeling so disconnected, all these people, you're not one of them. Not anymore. You're a vampire. Kindred. And you need to carve your own path in this strange new existence one way or another. Appropriately enough, you arrive at Sophie's building just as that thought crosses your mind. A quick word with the security guard and you're let into the elevator. Apparently, Mrs. Langley is expecting you. Of course she is. You knock and wait patiently as the footsteps on the other side grow closer. Finally, the door opens and Gregory, Sophie's driver, invites you in. I love how all, <laughs> all drivers, except Eve on LA by Night, just have these like played ass names like Gregory and Philip. You find the lady herself standing by the window, silhouetted against the city's midnight glow. She stares out, motionless, like a marble statue. Oh, this art is so beautiful. Oh, God, she's moving. Dynamic backgrounds. Hell yeah. 
Oh, she looks so sad. Ah, uh, it's our first choice. Let's let's be nice to her. Everything all right? She doesn't react immediately, but she seems to snap out of some meditative state and looks at you with strangely bleary eyes. Yes, it is. How kind of you to ask. Tell me, when you look out at this city, when you see the lights, hear the hum, smell the rain on the pavement, what do you think about? You gaze out. You thought the city couldn't surprise you anymore. You've lived here all your life. After all, or you've lived here all your life after all, but tonight something feels different. You realize in this moment that you have truly changed. Yes, you know what Sophie means. The way she gazed out that window saw the truth beyond, and you do the same. The view is fascinating. Each detail absorbing, every angle and new experience, the familiar made sublime. When you turn to Sophie again, she smiles at you knowingly. Ah, so you understand. I had my doubts, but perhaps we are of shared lineage after all. Oh. Oh. Let's check that definition real quick. Lineage. A vampire's bloodline. The kindred sires, sire sire, etc. An archaic term. So is this her telling her, or telling me, uh, that... She's like, oh, if you two look at the city with ennui, then perhaps you are a Toyotor. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why didn't they just test me? Why didn't they just test me when I first got there? My throat is something awful, y'all. I'm sorry. Thank you. You see, the blood that flows within me is that of Clan Toriador. There are thirteen <coughs> There are thirteen such bloodlines among us kindred, though that number has been contested in the past. These nights it seems that nothing is certain anymore. We're contesting the thirteen Is it Is it the we're not going to acknowledge some of the clans or some of these uh new ones popping up that we need to be concerned about like Hikata and the ministry and everything <coughs> this is gonna be cough stream let's check yeah so clan a bloodline of vampires who share the common characteristics passed on through the blood from sire to child. There are 13 known clans, all of which were reputably founded by members of the third generation. So that's an important thing to know uh, when you do vampires. So the think of it like um, the Hogwarts house founders. So like Rowena Ravenclaw. Uh, Malkov is the uh, founder of Clan Malkavian. Uh, but all of those people were third generation. First generation would be Cain. And so then Cain's kids, vampires, well, founders of the bloodlines. Uh, Clan Toreador! Yay! Many Toreador emerge from the ranks of accomplished artists, both new and faded, but not all artists need wheel to brush. To the Toreador, art encompasses all form of entertainment and stimulation. The Clan of the Rose courts the greatest actors, singers, writers, dancers, and even sex workers. We support sex workers if the degenerates believe such mortals will offer something new to their clan. Despite the custom of of embracing only the best, the Toreador fixation on beauty and innocence has caused many a diva to make a fledgling in haste. Many a moonlit night, new clan members have emerged as shallow hedonists, one-hit wonders, or just a stunning body with nothing else to offer. And the nicknames for Toreadors are so bad. I just call them art hoes. <laughs> but yeah, they're called divas, harlots, sensates, perverts, hedonists, degenerates. Um... I've actually seen degenerates used uh, by Toreadors as, like, a personal sign of affection. Like, 
you know, like, you refer to you and your friends as, like, these are me and my bitches. Um, I've seen a lot of Toreadors use degenerates, like, personally. Um. But yeah, the nicknames for the clans are always, like, really offensive. At least if you're a member of the clan. Like, the, uh, like, all of the ones for, uh, Malkavian are all very, like, lunatic, you know, things like that. Which I've definitely, uh, claimed lunatic back in my plays. Bloodline, a vampire's heritage, see also clan. Ah, thank you. Thank you. Alright. Let's go back. Alright. The clans have gone by many epithets over the years, but the names used these knights have their roots in medieval times. The original Inquisition, if you can believe it. Oh, I do. They use these to categorize us, describe our inherent differences. In time, we adopted them ourselves. Each clan has a uniqueness about it, inescapable, originating from an ancient progenitor carried from sire to child. For the Toreador, the gift lies in a sensitivity of sorts. We are uniquely attuned to beauty and ugliness both. We can see either where we where most cannot. A blessing on most nights. Occasionally a curse. Yeah, so also an uh, interesting thing about the generations <clears throat> is that the blood technically gets weaker as you go down. Um, so many people who are turned now are probably between the 13th and 16th generation. And, uh, I can't remember what the new official declaration is. I think it's 40, 15th generation is what you call thin bloods, where the vampire, uh, bloodline has become so diluted that some thin bloods can even go out in some daytime, you know, like sunsets and things like that. Um, so a lot of the mythos that we see about, like, half bloods and vampires is a lot of, like, similar to thin bloods. Okay, yeah, it is 14th generation. So 14th generation is where you get thin bloods. So, like, um, you know, and it and it also so much of, like, Toreador art-based stuff is also going to depend on how you came up. It's not like it's only beautiful stuff. If you came up during the Impressionist era and you returned during that, that would be what you find beautiful. And that can be great for you. Uh, but pretty much a universal thing is if they have to go into the sewers, they get very upset. Oh yeah, a Dadaist Toreador? Like, how cool would that be? I really want to see someone play Toreadors that are, like, really outlandish art. Like, oh my gosh, I would love that. I would love that. Like, not pretty stuff at all. Like, heavily deconstructed, like, yes. Bordering on Nosferatu fashion. The sheriff is of my clan as well. Although you'd be hard pressed to see him as such, poor Kadir, it breaks my heart to see him in this state. Kadir's a Toreador? We break in stereotypes in here. Kadir's art is sports. Oh, give him a break. Y'all already starting with the zaddy, I swear to God. That is a really shocking clan reveal, and I love it. I absolutely love it. I love people who break their clan stereotypes. Like, that's why I like on ATL by Night, we have, like, Aaron, who is easily the softest gang girl I've ever met. Like, Aaron is such a sweetheart, but he's still a gang girl, and, like... Mel is very politically inclined to where some people would mistake her as a Ventru, but she's still very much a Bruja. And I love that. Oh, blacksmith Toreador that makes weapons? Ah! I was, oh my god, okay. 
Y'all are gonna convince me to play a Toreador in the next uh, campaign or LARP that I do. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna like make a very against type Toreador. Still, there is a beauty to it as well. Nothing like a good fall from grace. Try as she might to act playful, you can tell she genuinely cares. She lets her gaze wander for a brief moment, but is quick to regain her composure. Then there are the Ventru, known for their pride and a proclivity to rule over others. The prince represents that clan, and is quite common in our society around the globe. Yeah, Atlanta's currently ru ruled by Ventru. But for how long? <laughs> Yeah, Ventrus are such common princes that I get really excited whenever there's a prince that's not Ventru. <laughs> I was a uh, Malkavian prince for a while. Thomasina's the only valid Ventru. Oh, I yes, I love Thomasina. She's Ventru that like she cares. She cares so much about those kids and. That's what I love about our coterie is like part of vampire is really the loss of humanity and constantly searching and finding it and trying so hard to grasp onto the little shreds of humanity that you can find. And Thomasina tries so desperately at that and it's so beautiful to me. Okay. <sighs> I just love our cast so much. <laughs> Where the blue bloods think themselves rulers, the Bruja like to see themselves as pre <laughs> preeminent revolutionaries. They call for universal rebellion while being slaves to their own temper. I mean, sick Ellie is sentimental Ellie. I am! Also, I stayed up very, very late to watch Critical Role last night, and that got me in my oo woos so much. I won't say any spoilers because I'm sure people in this chat have not watched it, but uh, yeah. I'm yeah, I also am a very sentimental fool uh, but Critical Role really got me in my oo-woos last night. <laughs> we don't discuss the rabble much anymore. Not after they've largely broken off with the Camarilla. To think they were philosophers once long ago. I still think Bruja are philosophers, Sophie. I hope to tell you more about some of the other bloodlines tonight. Yes, I would like to see them all in the dictionary. Let's check our dictionary. Got Clan Ventru. While many other clans claim positions of influence in mortal politics and business, no one can rival Ventru in the game of pure power and wealth. They have long been the leaders of the Camarilla, holding more positions of power than any other clan, and they are loath to give that up. The Ventru believe in the strength of tradition and lineage. The embrace is one of their most important rituals, and the choice of child affects the way the other members of the clan treat the sire. The Ventru therefore aim to embrace overachievers, politically or financially powerful kind, or those with a talent that sets them apart from the masses. They maintain that they are destined to rule all kindred, no matter the sacrifices involved. Their detractors call them... <coughs> L L this always cracks me up, sorry. <coughs> Little lords. I can't say that word. Uh, and tyrants. Those who respect Ventru for keeping the Camarilla together use terms like blue bloods, patricians, and warlords. Um, I think warlords is a strong word. <laughs> No, the reason that I can't say it is because I keep thinking of that audio is like, it's like audio from TikTok that's like, do I know it's pronounced bur bourgeoisie? Yes. Am I going to stop pronouncing it borgioise? No. <laughs> so I see that where my brain immediately just starts saying borgioise. <laughs> Now let's see, Clan Bruja! I will be playing Clan Bruja at the Atlanta LARP. I will be playing Falcon from ATL by Night. 
Clan Bruja have always embraced from the ranks of those sympathetic to counterculture and revolution. They seek out allies who question normative ideas and recognize the fire of the oppressed. They gravitate toward the underdog. Common perception placed punk, gang members, maladjusted immigrants rejected by society that should have protected them, and placard-carrying and Molotov-wheeling rioters among the Bruja. While the above is sometimes true, the clan adheres to no single ideology, and their desire for dissent reaches as deep as the fraudster ripping off his own company, the lawyer representing the poor pro bono, the neo-Nazi claiming to be alt-right, and the basement dweller downloading thousands of movies illegally for redistribution on streaming sites. Fledgings embraced to fight the protests are commonly referred to as rebels, punks, or rabble. So, because I'm going to address it because this is important. Um, there's a line in here that people don't like. Th that neo-Nazis claiming to be alt-right uh, sometimes are turned into clan bruja. The importance of the World of Darkness clans is to realize that not everyone turned is going to be a great person. And there are going to be very shitty, very terrible people sought out by the clans. And, you know, just because these kind of people may get brought into Clan Bruja does not mean it's okay to do this in your game. It, do it does not mean that you are welcome in this game if you are like this. And the errata very clearly calls it out. The book itself says that if you align with this ideology you are not welcome here so let me just make that very clear that world of darkness means that there will be terrible people here but you if you are like that you're not welcome here so with that let's move on I do hope she tells us about the rest of the bloodlines. <coughs> yeah, sometimes you want to fight Nazi vampires in your game. But Nazis aren't allowed. They're not welcome. Alright. Wait, what's my clan? She just told me. Why am I a dumb dumb? Why am I just, like, unnaturally dumb? Uh, how can I tell a kindred's clan? Clan stick together, right? Ugh. Mm. How can I tell a kindred's clan? <laughs> Trust me, some of them will let you know. Um. Oh, the dialogue options don't change based on your clan? That's wild. It's slightly disappointing, I guess. But, huh. Spent all those brain cells on art smart. Uh, actually, yeah, let's ask her how to tell because <laughs> clans stick together right <laughs> I can't even say that with a straight face uh, let's see here say I meet a vampire for the first time how can I tell what their clan is usually you cannot with a few exceptions perhaps here's that in Malkavian for some clans, the uniqueness I mentioned bleeds into their appearance or disposition, but even that can be misleading. This bitch really saying, well, you always know a Nosferatu or a Malkavian. <laughs> uh, Jesus. Outside of a few very specific cases, knowing one's clan is less important than understanding who they are personally. What drives them, their wants and needs, weaknesses too. Speaking of which, we come to the reason I wanted to speak to you tonight. It is customary in our society, especially among younger kindred, to organize into coteries. Sometimes these are called by the prince themselves or mandated by a fledgling sire. So, uh, our coterie... Uh, so there's different coterie types in the book. Um, we'll be covering all of this in Mortal's Guide to Darkness. I do promise. You won't just get sick rambling. <laughs> um, but the coterie 
on ATL by Night is what's called a questari coterie, a coterie that's put together for a singular quest, so or you know a goal in mind, and so the ATL by Night coterie is a questari coterie that is tasked with finding all the lost childer, and they were uh, called by the prince but organized by Falcon. In our case, you may treat it as more of a strong recommendation. I want you to seek out companions, not only because you need to learn about our society, but also because it is useful. I don't know if y'all can hear my dogs, but there's a UPS truck outside again, and they are losing it. <laughs> True friendships are rare among kindred, but having allies, even temporary ones, is something of a necessity these nights. We might be selfish creatures, but we are drawn to each other nonetheless. Let's see, where should I look for allies? Do you have your own coterie? What if I want to go it alone? We are not going it alone. We are not. So y'all help me. Should I ask where to look for allies or ask if she has her own coterie? Also, I don't know if you guys can see it. I am wearing my Ellie's Garage shirt from Borderlands. Because I'm Ellie. <laughs> I love this shirt. I was so excited when they sold it. Yay! Bobby 5! Yay! Well, Mortal's Guide will be starting very, very soon. Uh, I intended to start filming it much early, but I don't want the first few episodes to be like, Welcome to the World of Darkness! <laughs> so, I, I don't want the first episodes to be me sounding so horribly sick. So, um, that might have a slight delay, but it is coming out, and we're going to be covering uh, We Will Choose Two. But on Mortal's Guide, we're going to be covering the basic history of the World of Darkness, how to play, we'll go into a lot of game mechanics, um, do a more succinct description of all of the clans, all the disciplines, as well as some practical applications of the disciplines, because I have seen people that when they get into it, um, like awe, the ability awe, um, you know, draws people to look at you. Which is great when you read it, but then in game you're like, I don't really know how to use that. So we're going to try and cover a lot of the practicality of it. And I know a lot of people come to Vampire from D&D. So I'm going to try and put a lot of it into D&D type lenses. Like, you know, if you like playing a barbarian, you may think that you're drawn to Bruja. Bruja's a little bit more paladin, but, um, but we'll cover stuff like that. Uh... So no worries. If you pick up V5, we've got you. All right. Do you have your own code? So tell me, are you a part of a coterie? Any close allies? I don't have those that I trust enough to work with, yes. Oh, I do have those that I trust enough to work with, yes. Not a coterie, exactly. Though I have joined several of those over the years. Not in over a century, though. I just love, sorry, I ain't had any real friends in like a hundred years. If that ain't a mood. You, however, you would do well to meet some of the city's younger kindred and see if you can find a connection. It's an essential experience for one so young. Yeah, she old as hell. She's at least over a hundred. Uh... And she said that she's been in numerous coteries. So I'm going to put her, let's say, in the high 200s. She puts on a mysterious smile. I spent some of my precious time last night asking around, pondering potential kindred for you to meet. Came up with a short list of contacts. I hope you'll appreciate the gesture. Forging a partnership with them might offer perspectives and viewpoints that I cannot provide. Lenses through which to view our kind. They are all members of the Camarilla, of course, more or less. Okay, who are they? Thanks, I guess. You're choosing friends for me? Thanks, Mom! 
Stepsire. <laughs> Thanks, Stepsire. All right. So what are we going to do here? I don't like your choosing friends for me. That feels like really combative. I treasure my vampire mom. <laughs> my stepsire. Yeah, she just wants me to make friends. <laughs> oh, God. I'm like flashing back to like teen goth kid me that had no friends. My mom's like, just talk to somebody. And then I got in a vampire of the masquerade because the goth kid invited me. <laughs> Womp womp. I also forgot my Russian roulette uh, cough drops downstairs, so. But I did not forget my animal crackers again, so. <laughs> oh! I hit the keyboard with my animal crackers. Pardon me. <laughs> Alright, let's, let's ask who are they. Alright then, let's hear it. Who's on the list? Eager to learn about them, I see. Good. I'm glad. You literally just told me. So let us start with the Tremere. They are a powerful clan, disliked by many, but feared and respected by many more. They have been an important pillar of the Camarilla since the very beginning. They are blood sorcerers. Blood sorcerers? You could swear you once saw them play at the Apollo. Probably not the same blood sorcerers, though. Would it be great if it was? Sophie snickers. Oh, child, don't be caught up with that look on your face when you meet a warlock in person. They really are adept at using Vitae, their own as well as others, to unique and potent effects. Since they are quite rigid in their hierarchy, the kindred I had in mind for you might need some persuading. His name is Agathon. That's a D&D &D name. From what I hear, he is quite the scholar, very ambitious, the child of a noted Tremere here in New York, Aisling Sturbridge. Spend enough time with Agathon, and I'm sure you'll run into her sooner or later. Blood magic intriguing. A scholar sounds boring. It is so rude. Uh, a chance to meet an important person then. I I like this just because uh, like <laughs> it's dumb why I like this. I know nothing about New York because the um. The lore for Vampire the Masquerade, like, every major city has it. And so, like, I'm versed in Atlanta. I'm kind of versed in Orlando. I'm versed in LA. But there's so many major cities. Like, London has a whole thing going on. Vancouver has a whole thing going on. Chicago has a whole thing. It's so much. And I want to learn all of it. So I'm playing this with zero knowledge of New York. So, like, these people, these are new names to me. I love this. Let's see. Blood magic. This whole blood magic thing sounds intriguing. Oh, yes. Fascinating. It is also a well-kept secret of the Tremere. Don't expect them to share it right away. Some things have to be earned. Anyway, if you wish to contact the young Tremere, I hear you can usually find him in a New Age bookstore out on Broadway. The Tremere have their own, or have one of their workshops there. Gregory will give you the details. Oh, Aisling is the region of the Tremere tran Tantry. That's awesome. Saurus and Tremere. Thank you, Tremere. Now, this recommendation comes with a bit of a caveat. As you recall me saying, most bloodlines have unique features that might not be obvious at first glance. Well, there is one clan whose members wear their curse on their sleeve. Ooh. The Nosferatu. Rude! Rude! <laughs> I really want her to have a cigarette holder and start talking about how she's a very rich, rich widow with a terrible secret. My husband? Dead? Certainly I didn't do it. <laughs> 
Wait, Nosferatu? As in the German Expressionist classic? No way. Everyone, no wonder they make their havens in sewers, abandoned buildings and such. Their appearance is hideous and obviously unnatural. Wow. I'm just gonna let that hang in the air, Sophie. Quite rude. Had they walked the streets like other kindred, they're kind of would <laughs> would have learned of our existence long ago. This is so rude. They <laughs> leave the Nosferatu alone. They got an update in V five. They're allowed to be seen by people. They're just like real ugly. She is wrong. Nosferatu got a very needed update. They can be seen. Lower generations aren't that ugly. Like, also, they can do um, Mask of a Thousand Faces and just look normal. So, leave Nosferatu alone. They can't all be as fabulous as Dot Matrix. The dogs really want me to know about that UPS driver, I swear to God. Did she just shudder? It's hard to tell with her usual complexion, but you could swear her skin suddenly took on an even more sickly color. The one I have in mind isn't as big of an eyesore as the worst of them, but he is no Adonis either. Still, he has some talents and connections that you might find useful. His name is D'Angelo. He has an office, for lack of a better term, in the otherwise abandoned grain terminal in Red Hook. Right next to one of those Swedish stores. The name escapes me. The ones with the awful furniture. <laughs> and that is how we copyright friendly say the stores next to an Ikea. <laughs> so, since the dogs are being so upset, uh, at the end of the stream, it you know, depending on how far we get, I will go get the dogs and you all can meet the dogs. So that will be my end of stream treat for everyone. If you guys stick around and you're a good, good little family, I'll let you meet the dogs at the end. <laughs> oh, <laughs> what? Ikea? Uh, I feel like that's, that's the easy response an office or what connections does he have feels like the most obvious one like because we don't know who Nosferatu are so we don't know about like Shreknet level stuff okay the y'all are into the what I <laughs> <coughs> all right A Swedish furniture store you mean Ikea Yes, that's it. My mind struggles to retain things that are aesthetically displeasing. <laughs> ah. <laughs> Sophie just really out here. Sophie out here just hating Ikea. Judgy bitch. I love her. I'm about to grab one of the dogs. They are just so upsetty. <clears throat> D'Angelo does odd jobs for Kadir, digging up dirt, locating kindred who would prefer to remain hidden, the kind of work the Nosferatu are best at. He's on a case right now, something to do with kind murders, I think. After your initial brush with our dear sheriff, I think it would be wise to show some goodwill towards his agenda. Assisting D'Angelo with his investigation might just be the th might be just the thing. Don't be upsetty. Give them spaghetti. Sophie Judgely. You guys are ridiculous. All right. Dogs are super upset. Give me just a second. I am going to go grab one of them and we will have dog stream. Just a sec.
So everyone meet Tyrion. This was one of the yelling ones. I love that Emily knew immediately that I was going to get Tyrion. Because Tyrion is my baby boy. He can only stay for a minute because Luna's going to get very upset without him. Uh. Ah! <laughs> He's like, but I want to go play! No, stay with mommy. Oh, <laughs> stay with mommy. It's okay. All right. She takes a brief pause to look out the window again. Now come the two more exotic proposals. Exotic, as if the blood mage and the vampire detective were business as usual. <laughs> they are. You may have heard about the Gangrel before. They are a wild clan, in touch with their beasts in a way others might not dare to attempt. They mostly keep out of big cities, but there are exceptions. Hey, Aaron! <laughs> Nominally, they haven't been a part of the Camarilla for over two decades, but the one kindred I would like you to meet has strong shall we say familial ties to the sect her name is tamika also so yes the camarilla and the bruja officially split from the camarilla um or the gangrel and the bruja officially split from the camarilla but um they also like they still belong to the camarilla in some cities because it's it's more like Okay, the clan's not officially a part of this, but if we feel that this is what needs to be done, then that's what we'll do. Do you want to go play? He keeps staring at the door, so... Real quick, I'm gonna let them go play. Tyrion, Tyrion, say bye to everybody. Say bye to everybody. Oh, <laughs> he really wants to go play. Okay, okay, okay. Hold on, everyone. <laughs> Hey, I was muted, uh, but I was just saying, um, Tyrion used to hate Luna because she always wanted to play, but now he actually gets upset if he can't play with her, and it's so cute. All right. Uh, let's get an animal cracker. Okay. <clears throat> so, yeah. Camarilla and Bruja don't officially belong, but in a lot of Camarilla-run cities, they can become a part of it for purpose of a shared goal, which is what is happening on ATL by night. Her sire, Jezebel, was instrument during the Battle of New York back in 1999, the very same battle that cemented the city as a Camarilla domain. I do know about Battle of New York. That was intense. Sadly, her achievements have gone largely unrecognized. Tamika and a number of her siblings still reside in the domain they were awarded after the battle, Prospect Park. Jezebel herself left the city some years ago, fed up with being underappreciated. Girl, yes. Same. Big same. Alright. Should I contact non-Camarilla clans? <laughs> That's a valid question. You just told me, like, this is a Camarilla city. They're not in the Camarilla. Obviously, there's good reason to talk to them, but... Siblings, I feel, is the obvious, like, 
Yes, siblings, anyone else turned by the same sire. Anything more about Tamika? I'm gonna let you guys help me on this one. Because I'm not sure what we should choose. Let's see. We're getting a few for two. Oh. Okay. Multiple people saying two. Siblings? Actual biological brothers and sisters? No, not in the mortal sense. The gangrel sometimes use the word brood to indicate childer begat of the same sire. As you can probably tell, they do take the whole animal motif quite far. That's a read. <laughs> I'm not sure how many of them there are, but they are rumored to be a tight-knit group. The gangrel often act on instinct, so when you meet Tamika or her siblings, be careful not to slight them. They are easily provoked and can hold a grudge for a long time. I speak from experience. Who did you piss off, Sophie? Uh, does Aaron Goodboy have siblings uh, from ATL by Night? Uh, you might want to submit that for uh, Blood Bonding, the interview show. Because that is a complex answer that even Aaron doesn't know the full answer to. That's all I'll say about that. So you see, seeking out Tamika could, prov could prove quite educational, if nothing else. And who knows, perhaps you'll find her temperament to be a welcome change of pace. But speaking of change of pace, I have one last suggestion for you, though it's one I hope I don't make lightly. The kindred who calls herself Hope. I know who this is! I know who this is! Because someone uh, spoiled it for me. Because I was very sad. Because my clan wasn't represented in this game. So somebody told me. And I'm hype. She's a Malkavian! They are a uniquely cursed clan. For centuries we consider them mad, insane, unhinged. For those of us who spend enough time with them. Come to understand the truth. Malkavians aren't crazy. It's just too much all the time. Hmm. Huh. <sighs> yes. Okay. It is no sickness, but a unique perception of the world that has them appear to, be, to us as unstable. And that perception can prove to be very valuable. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, in the game that I played for many years, I was a Malkavian. I've played a Malkavian for 16 years as one character. Uh, her name is Cassandra, and she worked her way up to Prince. So I have actually been a Malkavian Prince before. Let me tell you, it's real fun to call for the head of a venture that calls you a lunatic repeatedly. <laughs> okay. Okay. Having a Malkavian as your companion might be taxing on the nerves and a true test of patience at times, but their insight and intuition are unrivaled among kindred. As for Hope specifically, she is said to be a recluse, but I have it on good authority that she can currently be found in an internet cafe, I believe it's called, in Lower Manhattan. Gregory has the address. I need to ask my spouses, how taxing is it to be married to a Malkavian? <laughs> I have unique insight. I'm just very exhausting, I'm sure. Says the person who plays, like, mainly vampire games with kitty cat ear headphones. That's just Malkavian life, baby. Okay. She doesn't sound like my type. Fuck you. I love her. Internet cafe quaint. I... My goodness. My goodness. Dogs. Where did you learn about Hope? Uh, 
I feel like an Aeronet Cafe quite is like a very Toreador haughty answer. I'm gonna go with three. I'm gonna go with three. Yeah, two sounds judgy AF. Where did you learn about her exactly? One of my colleagues told me about her. He considers her uniquely talented and tapped into the current fads among kind. Not something I am personally interested in, as I'm sure you know by now. <laughs> She's real hip. I'm sure you can understand that I myself am not hip. <laughs> yeah, it does sound like Tyr Tyrion's like <laughs> that meme of let me in, let me in. <laughs> He's tired of playing with Luna. I take his word for it at any rate. Well, I believe that's all of them. I still have a few social calls to make tonight, so I'll leave you to it. Use tonight and tomorrow night to arrange some cordial visits of your own. I'm not a regular mom. I'm a cool mom. I, honestly, that, that line I feel like is Sophie in a nutshell. Except reversed. Sophie's like, you don't understand. I'm not a cool mom. I'm an old mom. Yeah, someone just said it. I'm not a cool mom. I'm an old mom. Hashtag step, step sire. Uh, I will send Gregory for you as soon as I have further need of your services. Oh, that reminds me. You'll need a car. Join us downstairs, won't you? See, like, just let me get turned in an art gallery. Someone will give me a car. Will give me an apartment. Like, this is... Mm, Camarilla provides. She smiles once more and turns to her driver. He helps put her, put on her coat, and the three of you leave Sophie's apartment. Sophie points to one of the cars near the building as Gregory hands you the keys. It's a rather inconspicuous compact car, a decent, uh, a decent looking, if not luxurious, ride. Stay safe, Lamar. This is your first night alone. Don't let it be your last. As they drive away, you find yourself with more freedom than you've had for the past few nights. A blessing or a burden? Time will tell. With a list of addresses in hand, you consider your next move. Oh! Who are we gonna go see first? So we got... To, this is clearly Tamika. That's clearly Hope. Oh, one of these is the Nosferatu. Maybe him? <laughs> Everyone's screaming Hope. Hope! Okay, okay, we will we will do hope. Uh, speaking of Malkavians, um, I have contemplated, and you guys can let me know what you think, of doing a Malkavian playthrough of the original Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines um, starting on Saturday mornings. Would you guys be down to join me tomorrow morning, same bat time, same bat channel, for some old school Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines Malkavian edition. <laughs> I'm already getting, yes, Beach, do it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I will commit to that right now. Saturday mornings, 10 a.m., Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines. And then when Bloodlines 2 comes out, we will do a full Malkavian playthrough there. Uh, so, all right. Hope. Searching for hope. Sophie suggests you meet Hope, a reclusive member of the Malkavian clan. She supposedly holed up in an internet cafe in Lower Manhattan. Oh, I need to rest first. We getting close to that daytime. So real quick, let's rest. You notice something strange by the front door of your haven. A letter's been slipped under the door in a cream-colored old-fashioned envelope. There's no name on it, but you know it's meant for you. Opening the letter, it's clear it's been sent by someone incredibly old-fashioned, rich, or a fan of classic stationery. No normal person sends letters like this. The note is short and terse, written in elegant, delicate handwriting. You're cordially invited to a rendezvous at the Cathedral of St. John the Divine. <coughs> I will be waiting to make your acquaintance tomorrow night. Look for me closer to God. I, I love the ATL by Night fans in the chat going, it's Olivia. <laughs> A formally handwritten note, it's Olivia. Oh, 
what's happened to Olivia? You guys will find out on season two. I'll be revealing the season two uh, date pretty soon. Pretty soon. There is no other information. It looks like you have a mysterious invitation for the following night. Ooh. All right. All right. If you final death, my wife. I'm sure Olivia's absolutely fine and has no way come to any harm whatsoever. Torpor is just a fancy word for a big nap. I don't like the way you say that. <laughs> All right. Wait. Who does? We got to Oh, oh, that's going to be the mysterious person. All right. Accept. It's a quiet, moody internet cafe. Half of its space serves as a comfy coffee bar these days. But behind a glass wall, it still has a space dedicated to a row of PCs. Player characters? From the street, you can notice tired adults in casual clothes typing away absentmindedly and some bored kids wasting the late evening hours on colorful online games. Hey. <laughs> I feel seen. If Sophie's intel is to be believed, this is where Hope has set up her haven. One of the waiters is standing outside the building, gazing at the sky with a smartphone in one hand and a vape pen in the other. You approach the man and tell him I'm looking for hope I was supposed to meet hope here or I'm here on official business hope would hate that like this is meta but that's Malkavian speaking through me like don't say that that sounds terrible um, I'm gonna eat an animal cracker while you guys pick option one or two Whenever we eventually, whenever we play Bloodlines together tomorrow, if I get to the haunted house level, whenever I do, you guys are going to see that if, uh, honestly, it's been, let's see, 2004, so it's been 16 years since that game came out, and that level still scares me. I write a horror show, damn it. I write multiple horror shows. That level still scares me. Alright. Alright, I'm looking for hope. I'm looking for hope. He releases a soft chuckle. Yeah, you and me both. I don't like that art. That's creepy. The man slowly takes a drag from his e-cig, sizing you up and down in silence. After a long, awkward moment, when you're ready to leave him be, he raises his voice again. Come. Right this way. He heads back into the cafe and you follow his lead. When you make your way through the space with computers, no one averts their gaze from spreadsheets, emails, Facebook profiles, or games of Fortnite. Is Hex here? Is Hexadecimal Nosferatu here? Wouldn't that be great? Why the waiter look like Chaz Price? <laughs> oh, Chaz activates my fight or flight, and I love him so much. <laughs> oh my god, yes. <laughs> Hex is playing Fortnite against the people in the internet cafe in Coteries of New York. <laughs> oh, get him, Hex. All right. It's a common sight, one you wouldn't have paid much attention to a few weeks ago. But now, it seems so unnervingly quaint. Would they still be spending their time like this if they were immortal? <laughs> Would I still be playing Borderlands if I was immortal? 
vampire coterie via discord i was just talking about that the other day that'd be hilarious just people assigning each other different roles like to be assholes The waiter unlocks an unassuming door at the end of the room and lets you inside. You two swiftly make your way through a labyrinth of sterile gray corridors, taking confusing twists and turns. Feels like you're traveling to a different world. Crossing one invisible portal after another. Eventually, you reach your destination. Look! Look at this room. I want to live here. Ah. Uh, 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 sorry. Sorry. I'm just, before I continue, I just want to take a minute. Okay, so we see this computer where she is clearly chatting. Oh my god, we got a little mask. She's got this little like streamer stage thing going on. Oh my god. Okay. Okay. Your guide motions you to enter a dark room with a lone source of pale light, a computer screen in the distance beckoning you to come closer. As you do, you hear the door shutting behind your back and a short chuckle echoing behind it. Is this the place? I I am digging these Malkavian vibes. I am. Oh, Malkavian just makes me so happy. Oh love Malkavian so much. Y'all really want to see some sentimental oo-woos. I got really sentimental at our rap party for season one talking about Malkavians. Nothing else to do but sit in a chair in front of a computer. The monitor displays a modern chat application. <laughs> so not aim. A cursor is blinking the user nickname entry field in the middle of the screen, obviously expecting you to input your handle. After brief consideration, you type in... Ah, what are we going to type in? Your name sounds like the dumb response. A random string of characters. <laughs> it's very Malkavian. Or something goofy. Everyone wants something goofy. Okay. Gosh. Oh, uh, yuck. That's what we're gonna type in. Oh, uh, yuck. It's, it's time for animal crackers and cookie butter. Ah! So this cookie butter is gingerbread. Which is wild. It's from Trader Joe's. Okay. Everyone's voting three, so we're going with the goofy response. Maybe it's your newfound sensibilities going haywire, but this place has a barely noticeable sleazy aura. Might as well go along with it. Cyrus Scarf 249. Give me the cookie butter now. This is a stick up. <laughs> I'll, uh, since the person commenting that is a friend of mine, if you come over, you can have some. You input Porno's Collector and push the enter button. <laughs> right, Trader Joe, sponsor me with your cookie butter. Please. I love it so much. I'm specifically not showing the label because it's Twitch. But just look up cookie butter. And it's the gingerbread one. After a few seconds, the chat window opens and messages start appearing on the screen in quick succession. Oh no. Hostage executioner. Oh god. Oh, for sure. No, for real. That was meant for Jerry, of course. Not much longer. Yeah, Jerry is chatting VP. Oh, oh god. Uh, you and me both both. Wait, who's porno selector? Porno selector. Porno selector. Uh, I don't know, Jerry. Uh, identify yourself within two minutes or get banned. Okay, hold on. We're going to scroll back and see what all this. Oh, this is inappropriate. What chat did I come into? Uh, 
I'm scrolling past a lot of this. Oh my god, literally, who cares? Cult of Luna! Oh, if only Luna was in here, but she is a bad girl right now fighting Tyrion. Uh, oh, that chat room is a hoot and a half. Oh, man. Okay. What the hell? Was anyone informed? No, no announcement. I know I wasn't. Jerry 2010. Um, uh. The chat goes silent. Everyone's seemingly waiting for you to say something before proceeding. This must be a close-knit group. Better say something before you ki before they kick you out. We are not saying I'm a vampire. We are not that stupid. Oh my god. Just a fucking walker walking masquerade violation. So fun fact, um, so B. Dave Walters, who plays Victor Temple on LA by Night, has a Patreon and a Discord, and you can join his Patreon to do uh semi regular uh games with him and uh you can also participate in the RP Discord as well, and it's so worth it playing in LA. Um, funnily enough, I became teacher's pet of the prince within about like five minutes <laughs> because I am born and raised Camarilla and know how to respect people and how to protect the masquerade. So we're not doing option three. Talbot Rourke will find me. I'm gonna say I'm looking for hope. I feel like it's the, like, I'm looking for hope was the magic keyword that got me back here, so. I'm looking, looking for hope. Is she here? Who the fuck are you? This is meant to be a safe channel. Investigating what went wrong. Stay calm, get their location, Jerry. Yeah, sure, that's our Jerry. Can DM to anyone interested? Oh boy, you're in trouble now. Yeah, you're gonna regret, dumbass. The <laughs> yeah, you're gonna regret the day you decide to spy on <laughs> Oh, this chat is a hoot. Would this chat have been so aggressive if I hadn't had a really dumb username? <laughs> Shall we use presents? I mean, we haven't eaten in a while. I feel like we should use presents. Like, fuck it. Fuck it. We had enough of these trash talking randoms. Time to teach them some respect! Your blood fires up, ancient power starts coursing through your veins, fingers tapping the keyboard buttons on their own. Let's see. Let's see if I have enough to use it. Better stay quiet if you know what's good for you. You have no idea who you're messing with. You will obey me. Let's see if it works through a computer. Certain levels of presence can go through um, other communications, like internet, but it has to be a real high level. And let's just see. I did it because using powers in this game is kind of rare, so I want to try it out. The chat goes silent once again, and then it explodes. Oh no. Oh my, look at here. Oh shit, watch out. He started typing properly. I'm glad I decided to log in earlier today. You have no idea who you're messing with. I'd be so pissed off if I miss this. You know he means business. Ha ha ha. Guess your powers don't work online. Go figure. You know, your cheeks would turn blood red right now if they still could. Got the info. Nice. You want to die, asshole? You will die. Die, die, die. Um, I'm about to... I'm not going to say what's about to happen. LMAOing at everyone. Sentencing pornos collector to death. I'm literally on my way to kill you right now. Yeah, sorry to inform you. You're about to die, rip bitch. <laughs> You're getting your throws lit right here, right now. Queen of the South? <laughs> That's Hex's username. There we go. <laughs> I 
A split second after you read the message, you feel someone's arms tightening around your neck. The violent return to reality catches you off guard. A jolt of panic rushes through your brain, paralyzing you momentarily. You've come to the wrong chat room, motherfucker. Ah! <laughs> a ridiculous whisper rings out next to your ear and the grip under your head gets even tighter. You start struggling, but even with your newfound supernatural strength, you're having trouble breaking out. This isn't a normal human you're dealing with. Last words. I could I could see her in the shadow. Ah! I'm so excited. I love her so much. Look at that iPhone. She got that iPhone. Sophie sent me here. Good luck. I can't die. We're not saying your chat room sucks ass. <laughs> yeah, everyone meet Ellie's new wife. Yep. This is my new wife. I'm in love. Uh... I feel like it's gotta be Sophie sent me here. I got a name drop because y'all stop voting me to say your chat room sucks ass. I'm not saying that to her. All right, Sophie, we're dropping Sophie's name. Sophie started this shit. Sophie sent me here. Sophie sent me here. Langley. Hmm. <laughs> the hand holding your chin shifts its position slightly. Don't struggle, or I'll break your windpipe. Or my phone. Which would end even worse for you. Sounds of a camera shutter and light flashing. Did they just take some selfies with you? Alright, that's not fun. I'm letting you go. We can have a talk. Don't do anything stupid, Mr. Intruder. Pretty please. The mysterious assailant loosens their grip on you and gently pushes you away. You quickly turn to take a good look at them. Let me just finish this. It's a pale blonde woman in her 20s, giving you slightly judgmental looks while rapidly tapping away at her phone screen. First, she knows her outrageous outfit, seemingly thrown together from random thrift store finds. That is not a problem. Then you take note of her tattoos, a sprawling tapestry of odd patterns and designs covering every visible part of her body. She did that before getting turned. At first glance, it all seems aimless, but it has a consistent sense of style upon closer inspection. Her eyes focus on you for a second. Gave you a scare, huh? Sorry, that's what you get for entering a lady's haven without her permission. And she's back to her phone. With her relatively small build, it's hard to believe you had trouble overpowering her physically. But then again, nothing is what it seems when it comes to the undead. And even compared to the vampires you've met so far, she comes off as an eccentric, curious presence. She shoots you another glance, noticing you're still cautious of her. Calm yourself, man. I won't pull anything like this anymore. It was just a... feel stupid saying it out loud. A vibe check. We got vibe checked by Hope. Ah! <laughs> <coughs> I love her with all my heart. I, uh, she is everything. She is everything. Hope, Hope Malkavian, marry me. I can't believe Hope vibe checked. <laughs> That's going to take me a second. Okay. Okay. I was just saying earlier, like, I want more millennial vampires that use, like, millennial lingo. <laughs> vibe check? Vibe check. Vibe check? God, which, which way do we ask this? <sighs> oh my God. Yeah, like, Lamar's not that old. He's probably in his 30s. He knows what a fucking vibe check is. 
Alright, we're not gonna ask, we're just gonna say vibe check. Vibe check. Yeah, I got a glimpse of your vibe on the internet and in a and in a dangerous situation. I'd say I've got a pretty good idea about who you really are. I'm Hope, by the way. If you're here, you've probably heard of me, so I went ahead and skipped the pleasantries. But come to think of it, I might have skipped too many of those. Yeah, she definitely fits the description you were given by Sophie. I still can't believe you got so mad online. You actually tried to use your powers on people talking trash about you from who knows where. Jesus. But you know, I kind of respect that dedication. It's amusing. Oh yeah, credit where it's due. You're probably not a boring person online going by your chosen handle. Believe it or not, among bloodsuckers, that's still rare as hell. Most of them are like clueless baby boomers when it comes to internet stuff. Anyway, don't worry about the chat. It was all a game to us. No hard feelings, okay? I'll introduce you properly later. On the monitor, the chatter continues normally. Your visit is like yesterday's news, no longer relevant or anything, or relevant to anything. But, uh, look, if we're going to talk about you, you should have something to say too. What are you doing here? About time, she asked. Note to self, she really loves the sound of her own voice. Sophia Langley sent me, I'm building a coterie or I need help. My apologies. A cough, like, got stuck in my throat. Ah. <laughs> uh, which one should we say? I feel like we should still name drop. But if I say... Three is true... Be like, I'm building a coterie, and Hope will be like, a coterie, and I'm like, I don't know what the word means, I just know that's what I'm doing. <laughs> I want to believe that Hope has these same headphones, too. Just kitty cat headphones. A pink gamer chair. I have an entire pink setup, but you guys can't see it. Uh, yeah, let's go with I'm building a coterie. I'm looking for people to join my coterie. Coterie? Been there, done that, not interested. Unless. She takes a closer look at you, her eyes go wide. Wait, 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 wait. Shit. Are you the new Langley plaything? Words seem to be getting around fast. Of course you are. It was obvious the second Langley got her hands on a new servant, she'd start building a network. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Your emissions tell me that could really come in handy when, but Langley, that's a risky game. That kind of ambition attracts too much attention. Piss off. But then again, fucking Kara. Mm -hmm. She seems to be having a spirited argument with herself. Only parts of it audible. Is it just you or do her facial expressions and body language change a bit between one sentence and the other? Before you make certain it's not just your eyes playing tricks on you, she focuses half her attention back on you. The other half, of course, is still obsessed with her smartphone. Listen, I'm not saying I'm not interested in a uh, cooperation, but before I make a decision, I need to make sure you sort of understand me and that I sort of understand you. And since I was planning to put on a show before you came here, I propose a little game. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't trust it, but I do trust it. Hope absentmindedly spins her phone in her hand, considering how to put her thoughts into words. Then she approaches a switch on the wall and flicks it. Uh oh! Uh oh! <laughs> wee woo! Wee woo! Wee woo! <laughs> Neon lights flare up, illuminating the room. You take a look around. The room is certainly unique. It looks like a butcher's room, repurposed to be living space. The modern computer in front of you starkly contrasts the ominous industrial walls. 
God, fucking wee woo wee woo. Ah, uh, I love this. At the back, there's an overwrought bed covered in velvet with meat hooks hanging above it. On top of the bed sheets, you notice what seem to be pieces of elaborate S&M equipment and a camera. Wait a minute. You want my help? Moderate my cam show. Cam show? Your eyebrows twitch involuntarily. This is definitely not the kind of request you expected to hear tonight. She notices your confusion. Take it or leave it, buddy. You just became a kindred, but you want to become my partner in crime? Show me you can handle yourself while watching my back in my everyday environment. She's serious. The show starts in ten minutes. If you think yourself better than this, better walk out the door right now. I won't hold a grudge. I've got better things to do. As if to prove it, she looks at something displayed on her phone and cracks a brief grin. Another reply typed down with an absurd speed. Tap, 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 tap. Nine minutes. It's now or never. Show moderator. Risk of violating the masquerade? Hi. Content warnings? Oh, yes. So, do you take the job? Why the hell not? We are rolling with this. We are rolling with this. I'm gonna get some more water real quick. Yeah, everyone, we're rolling with this. This is how this is going. I hate that point of being sick where like the skin around your nose is very dried out. So it just makes your nose itch constantly. Uh. Yeah, we're rolling with this. Why the hell not? Hope brightens up, and her smile looks surprisingly sincere. Excellent. I promise you might find this interesting in more ways than one. I kind of love the irony of doing this scene on a Twitch stream, right? <laughs> we're live streaming. Uh, Malkavian live streaming. Hmm. And... We have a chat mod for our game where I'm about to play a chat mod. <laughs> she spends a minute setting up the computer you used before and then urges you to sit down. The explanation of the moderator functionalities is simple. It boils down to ignoring anyone who doesn't disrupt the chat, banning anyone who does, and kicking anyone who's causing minor trouble. Five minutes later, she's already online, sitting on her bed in a provocative pose. It's a sex show, isn't it? Her voice, previously hushed, rings out with full force. How are you doing tonight, hopefuls? <laughs> hopefuls? Ah! Ah! I can't say shit. I call all y'all darlings. So, oh my god. This is going to be great. Oh, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. You peek at the chat. We're not worthy! Queen! Fucking angel! Oh god! Uh... Oh, so we're actually gonna get to mod the chat! Oh my god, this is amazing! Ah! Okay. So... I think we should just ignore. Nobody has said anything yet. You're tempted to try out kick and bam prompts as soon as possible, but obviously you won't punish someone for a little dirty talk. Thank you! Today's show is quite special. Please welcome our new moderator, Pornos Collector. <laughs> la -bow, la -bow, la -bow, la -bow. Well, sorry for sentencing you to death earlier. At least the community here seems to be a bit more welcoming this time. Looks like this place has an established hazing ritual. Or maybe they and Hope came up with one specifically for you. Who knows? You decide to stay silent. Eventually, people stop riffing on you and focus entirely on the star of the show. Alright, let's start this one with a bang, shall we? It begins Queen. Oh boy, she's gonna do it. This is where the strip show starts? 
You raise your head, curious about what kind of performance she's going for. Uh, um, uh, masquerade! Wee 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 wee! Uh, uh, that stresses me out. Okay, sorry. First, she opens her mouth and reveals her retractable fangs in front of the camera. Right off the bat, the online audience is treated to a sight of her wholly human set of teeth turning into a monster's maw. The image is both revolting and fascinating. She raises her left wrist for everyone to see and then bites. I mean, I do have my fangs like right here beside me that I could pop in at any time, but it's really hard to talk with them on. The fangs immediately turn her arm into a horrifying, gory mess. It's unclear if she used them to slash or bite, but one thing's for sure. No ordinary human could cause such damage. If any ordinary human suffered such a wound, you'd expect a geyser of blood to appear. But it doesn't. Hope's technically a corpse, so it's impossible. She flashes her monstrous smile and starts smearing Vitae all over her hand to maximize the impact of the violent image. Then she starts drinking it up. She makes it a point to make the sight as gruesome as possible, looking like a hyena feasting on a corpse. The contrast of her behavior with her look of an Instagram model is stunning. Once she's done, she reveals her wrist to the camera for the last time. She starts making theatrical gestures with her right hand as the wound begins to mend. Shortly after, the wound is gone. It's like a magician's trick. Her left hand looks like nothing bad ever happened to it. Here's an appetizer. First blood to kick off the show. While you're wondering what the hell is going on, Hope catches a glimpse of your bewildered face and turns into your direction. How's that for an opening? Uh. So what are we gonna say? This isn't a sex show? <laughs> you're shooting stuff! We're obviously not gonna say, are you hurt? That's a dumb, that's a dumb one. Lamar's a dumb boy, but we're gonna limit how dumb. Seeing a bunch of votes for one, okay. Sex? What, were you counting on me getting naked in front of you or something? Oh, honey, we've just met each other. If you expected a strip show, yeah, sorry to disappoint. This is more like a uh, live stream digital art. The erotic subtext is there, of course. You peek at the chat, they're going wild. She did that for free! Oh. Uh. <laughs> but eroticism is not the key here, it's vampirism. It's a new frontier, a living art installation. In the early 90s, the Japanese artists kept producing these videotapes with the beautiful woman committing gori harakiri. These are an inspiration. She bears her fangs again in a devious grin. But I have no interest in auto-destruction or turning myself into a victim. This is a celebration of a body I love, not self-inflicted punishment. Okay, we stand. We do stand. We have no choice but to stand. The audience came here to marvel at a beautiful vampire and her awe-inspiring powers. Mending wounds is just one of these powers. The people watching can pay to see more. Oh. Okay. Okay. I meant to read that in Hope's voice, but I was, like, intrigued by what she was saying. Oh, and don't worry. The only things the audience can see and hear are the things I allow them to. We can talk freely. Just remember to moderate the chat, will you? High risk of violating the masquerade. What a joke. She's blatantly breaching it in front of anonymous viewers. Still speechless, you turn your attention to the screen. Uh, uh, da, 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 da. Oh god, it's going too fast. Okay. Um...
Okay, none of those feel egregious. Uh, I feel like ignored. There's really nothing in there I'm worried about. Thirst victim just let you know you're based. <laughs> I know. <laughs> Which one's the spammy guy? Y'all said spammy guy. Last dude, that just OMG and then a bunch of key smashing, and their name is Masochist Sama. I think I think they're they're just into it. We'll we'll see. I don't think he's spamming. You let the guy vent his excitement. Seems harmless. Special message appears in the chat log claiming somebody has successfully sponsored the first goal of the show. Hope smiles and picks up a bag of blood from underneath the bed. Must have been retrieved from a blood bank. She showcases the label to the camera for everyone to see. Drink up, drink up, drink up. Hope pours all the contents of the bag into her throat. You have no doubt it's real blood. But wonder why the viewers would be so satisfied with something that's so easy to fake. Mm. Don't worry, it pays well enough. You don't even bother to tell her this is not what you're thinking about. Safe to assume she knows. So, what do you know about the kindred and the internet? Have they told you anything? While she is waiting for someone to sponsor her next vampiric feat, she decides to start a conversation. Is this the right time? Is there a vampire internet? No, nothing. Uh, is there a vampire internet? That's called the Madness Network and Shreknet, baby. Hmm. Yeah, is there a vampire internet? If you find something that looks like vampire internet, stay away. See, some of us used to experiment with our own secure networks. We tried to build our own information hubs, social networks, everything. She is still working the phone in one hand while looking for something under the bed with the other. On how many things can she concentrate at one time exactly? Oh, I'm sure a lot. Then one day, the NSA got in. Turns out elders never really got the hang of proper security practices, or the sigils they used to smear on their screens didn't exactly work as advertised. And we have another definition, so we're behind on definitions. So let's jump in. We gotta do our coursework. So real quick. Clan Tremere! A hermetic mage in 8th century Romania, Tremere was the leader of a cabal of magic users rightfully feared for their obsession with knowledge and power. And willing to accept his own mortality, Tremere cast his eyes on the hollowed secret of immortality. In his greed, the mage insisted the most terrifying magical experiments ever conducted, damning himself, or instigate, sorry, uh, damning himself and his followers to a hell of their own making. Terrified, they died and woke again to an eternity of unlife and hunger, cut off from their craft. In a mockery of their former magical rituals, now only fresh blood allows the Tremere to cast their thaumaturgic spells to twist reality. The clan is still organized like an initiate initiatory occult order, recently fractured into a number of competing houses, each claiming to be the rightful heir of Tremere's legacy. They see true power as knowing the ways of shaping the world, having access to the right blood, and owning the rarest of ancient artifacts. They're usually referred to as warlocks, hemetics, or transgressors. Also to uh, clarify, with tattoos, with kindred, any, so you're the state of your body freezes, more or less, when you get embraced. So, essentially, my Parthenax tattoo, that would stay after embrace. But any tattoo you get post-embrace, when you go to sleep, the ink will bleed out. If you dye your hair, it will turn back. All the dye will come out. If you cut it, it will grow back. Um, 
So yeah, so all those tattoos Hope has, she got before embraced, and that makes them even better. <laughs> clan Nosferatu. The clan of the hidden are known under many names. Hives, lepers, sewer rats, carnies, scabs, orlocks. But a few of them sound pleasant. <laughs> but few of them sound pleasant. For the Nosferatu, the embrace is a journey through abjection, as the blood of the horror gradually deforms the struggling tissues of the human body into grotesque abominations. Weeks of pain result in deformity similar to terrible birth defects, cancer growths, crippling injuries, and leper-like sores. Those who endure it find themselves as monstrous echoes of Murnau's silver screen vision, but perhaps pain and humiliation teaches compassion. The Nosferatu, as they jokingly call themselves, are the most humane of the kindred, wearing their curse on the outside rather than the inside. To blend in, some call on the blood to wear the borrowed faces of their victims or disappear from sight, while others rely on prosthetics and heavy makeup. So yeah, the Nosferatu being the most humane is canon, and that's why we had characters like Sarah. who has a very strong sense of justice. <laughs> Clan Gangrel. Clan Gangrel are outcasts, wanderers, rogues, and hunters. They make havens in the poorest parts of cities and feel no shame for doing so. They claim few domains as their own, but defer to no prince. If a feral enters a city, the prince will either accept it or have to fight the feral to get them to back down. Gangrel embrace from the ranks of survivors and fighters, leaders of prison crews and gangs, explorers, urban and otherwise, and any kind who sees the world as something to traverse instead of something to hide from. They care not for looks or title, but for accomplishment and reputation. They are commonly referred to as wolves, feral, and outcasts, or in a more derogatory manner, as animals, strays, and savages. That's why we love Gangrel. They're... Gangrel has always been <clears throat> the clan that <coughs> the clan that people joke if you have a friend that plays werewolf that you can't get to play vampire just get them to play Gangrel. <coughs> Denise, we need a cop. Time to turn officer good boy. I will say, playing Alpha was probably the single most stressful thing I did all season. <laughs> because when you guys really meet Alpha, he's not exactly how I played him. That was drunk Alpha. So, I can't wait for you guys to meet the real one. He's so cool. <laughs> I really like Alpha. <laughs> Aaron has a lot of valid reasons to hate him, but I as a storyteller really like Alpha. Clan Malkavian! Psychologists would diagnose the children of Malkov with schizophrenia, depression, obsessive compulsive disorder, or post-traumatic stress disorder, sometimes all at once. In reality, Clan of the Moon are all these things and none. Like the wise madmen of poetry, the derangement stems from seeing too much of the world at once, from understanding too deeply and feeling emotions that are too strong to bear. They self-medicate with blood, but that is just a temporary solution. All Malkavians suffer mental illness following the embrace, sometimes accentuating an existing condition, other times adding a new dimension to their instability. As if their thoughts and actions were based on otherworldly logic, there seems to be no knowing when the condition will manifest destructively or when it will offer important perspectives where such were previously lacking. They are referred to as oracles, jesters, and visionaries, or in a more insulting manner, madmen, liabilities, and lunatics. Oh, someone said, do not trust Alpha, no siree. Has Alpha given you a reason to not trust him? Denise trusts him. Elder. A vampire who has experienced at least two or more centuries of unlife. Elders are the most active participants in the Jihad, the secret self-destructive war waged between the ancient undead. Elder vampires tend to manipulate their lesser kin, using them as pawns in a terrible game, the rules of which defy comprehension. And lastly, we have Vitae, an archaic term for the blood of the vampire. Uh, Vitae also comes into play when you consider things like um, some vampires can't have like bagged blood. 
because for them it loses a lot of the Vitae quality. Or like dead blood or old blood. The only man allowed to wear a jacket with no shirt is Pete from the Unsleeping City and only because he paid good money to not have to wear a shirt and he wears it with a cowboy hat. <laughs> Alpha was absolutely wearing a shirt. He was just disheveled. <laughs> also, fans of Blood Crow stories, you will be pleasantly surprised, I think, when you meet Alpha. It's someone you know and love. That's all I'll say. Alright. Then, of course, all the other three-lettered intelligence agencies of the world got the intel. A lot of them decided bloodsuckers were the perfect new enemies for our post-9-11 times. The Second Inquisition came into being. Ever heard of it? And since I think some of you have it, let's jump to the definition! Second Inquisition, often abbreviated as SI, the collective name among vampires for the recent coordinated efforts of intelligence agencies to combat the kindred as if they were a terrorist threat. Few individual agents understand that they are... F few individual under agents understand what they are fighting, and the intra-agency collaboration codenamed First Light places enormous importance on keeping their operations secret and disguised as ordinary anti-terrorist action. It's not Judson, by the way. Alpha is not Judson. A lot of our kind died just because they were too present online. Right now, the remains of our old network serve as government honeypots, kept alive to attract fledglings and hunt them down. You post a certain keyword on Twitter or Facebook, you get tagged for investigation. You fit certain patterns, you get tagged for investigation. So there is a certain thrill in becoming an online presence without attracting attention from the authorities. She stretches on the bed. I hope you're still monitoring the chat. Of course not. You're not as good at dividing your attention as she is. You correct your mistake and check the recent messages. So that last message, we got a kick. We got a kick. Wait, or do we ban? I think with that name, we need to ban them. Also, the only woman I don't hate, fuck you. Uh. Yeah. This kind of nickname only suggests trouble. You get rid of them permanently. Good job. She's keeping close tabs on you. Anyway, yeah. When the Nosferatu admitted to Camarilla their network got compromised, the elders went batshit insane. Internet communications became strictly forbidden. There were executions. A lot of people who use social media to secretly contact their mortal families and lovers got offed. That goes without saying. But if you weren't careful, even the most innocent web usage could result in being punished with final death. Thanks to user Dick Steele, the next goal has just been successfully funded. Let's go. Vanishing act. Dehumanize yourself and face to bloodshed. She raises her hand. Three fingers up. Two fingers up, one finger up. The countdown ends and she immediately disappears from the screen like a ghost. You can still see her on the bed, but the live feed indicates there's nobody there. When you deeply focus on the digital image, you swear you can make out some unusual glitching where her silhouette should be. It could very well be just placebo. Obfuscate, motherfucker! You ready for this? Three, two, one. A flash of the camera, the instant she reappears on the screen, she takes a stealthy, sticking her tongue out in a provocative manner. She did Ahigao face, didn't she? The chat room explodes in cheers again. She's their vampire queen. 
You briefly wonder about her being glued to the screen. Is this the fantasy everyone is here for? A girl showing off cheap magic tricks while lazily browsing her social media? <coughs> is that what I need to do? Alright. You realize you're way out of your depth here. Meanwhile, Hope decides to continue her lecture. Those were wild times, especially in New York. While most of them have no clue as to our real nature, a lot of clandestine organizations have classified us as national threats. And since this is where the towers fell, the agencies are very much present around here, looking for easy PR victories. The last SI raid here was just a few years ago. It was a big one, stirred up the hornet's nest something fierce. But although it's 2019, NYC is ruled by someone who got embraced before World War fucking II, and the cam as a whole really got spooked and swore off the internet. Of course, they're not dumb and understand that you can't really coexist with modern kind without the internet. It's a gray zone right now, like piracy, technically frowned upon, but let the one without sin cast the first stone. The SI is a real threat, no joke. But in many senses, the darkest place is right under the candle. You take another look at the screen. We want blood. How about some bat stuff? Can you do some bat stuff? Can you show us next time? Oh, this person's username is Fuck Porto's Collector. Hey! <laughs> it's been a long, hard day. Please give me a shout out. A familiar nickname pops up. Oh, Maskus Sama. Should we kick them? They're just being, like, kind of spammy. I don't know if we should ban, ban them just yet. Boomer vamps. Voomers. So the Prince of New York is a voomer. Okay, everyone's voting kick. We're gonna kick. You give the guy a kick for spamming the chat. The message is deleted so fast. Hope might not have even noticed. A duty carried out well. You're surprised to feel an inkling of pride. Oh yeah, fun fact about being a vampire. We can sweat and pee if we just exert ourselves really hard. Some of us can even orgasm. We can even cry, but only tears of blood. It's something I always dreamed of doing when I was 14. So romantic. And it drives them crazy. As proof of her words, the scarlet tears start running down her face. The chat goes wild. This seems to be exactly the kind of thing they were waiting for. Ah, an angel that fell down from heaven. Oh my gosh, she did it again. <laughs> Dude, calm down. Uh We're gonna ban this guy. Fuck him. Mm -mm. No. Yeah, there's our shit dude. Ban. And banned. Just to be clear, you realize what we're doing here is a blatant breach of the masquerade, right? I honestly expected you to leave or inform somebody by now, but you haven't, have you? You try to focus on the chat. A familiar nickname is displayed on the screen. They're back. Should ban them. We already kicked them, so we essentially warned them. Good job handling that guy. Great. If nothing else works out, seems like you fit this job at the very least. In any case. The last goal has just been funded. It's time for the great finale. This is what you've all been waiting for, right? Yes, queen. Yes, queen. <laughs> her voice has changed. She gets closer to the camera, letting her face fill the frame of the live feed. Her mesmerizing eyes are pu focused purely on the viewers. You wanted blood? Come out into the streets. Claw out your neighbor's throats. Slash their veins. And drink up. Yes, queen. Yes, queen. Hope's presence becomes absolutely horrifying, and it influences the chat in some incomprehensible way. Everyone starts typing like they're possessed. Liberate yourselves from the shackles of ordinary mortality. Make them scream. Feel the warmth of their entrails. 
Ooh. Ah. <laughs> what the hell is she doing to these people? What have you gotten yourself into? Transcend your bodies. Release the message of hope into the world. She jerks violently for a second and then falls down on the bed like a marionette that had just had its string severed. She exhales loudly a few times and laughs. When she does, the room goes dark again. All right, that's enough. Instead of continuing, she does something with her phone. The stream ends and the chat instantly becomes dead quiet. Let me take over. The atmosphere in the room has completely changed. She's already put herself together and stood up. Now she's walking towards you. At Volker. What the fuck just happened? Guess the show is over. Everyone relax and go home. Oh, no. Ugh. I'm not reading that out loud. Hostage, I swear on my father's grave. One day I will find you and kick the ever-living shit out of you. After every line she delivers, she changes her voice, the way she puts her lips together, and even the way she moves. Oh, I should have known that before I was doing voices. You've caught glimpses of her acting this way, but only now have you started to figure it out. I... I was suspecting this the whole fucking time. I suspected it the whole time. I am so used to Malkavians that I was like... Got you clocked, bitch. Got you clocked. Okay, we stand hope. We love her. She's the best being in existence. My favorite waifu, my bean. Uh, so how are we going to respond as our boy? Wait a minute, does it mean... I feel like that one's the easier one. Oh, some of y'all don't know. Okay, here we go, here we go. Wait a minute, does that mean... I'm immortal, I'm bored. I'm separated from most of the vampires in the city by a generation ca generational chasm. And it's so goddamn lonely. The internet used to be my only friend. Years ago, I started researching tulpas, collective unconsciousness, all the mumbo jumbo at the intersection of psychology and spirituality, and I decided to experiment. The show was fake. A few years later, I was an Instagram fashionista, a successful erotic model, a vital part of pop culture commentariat, a viral shit poster, a cryptocurrency expert. All my internet selves started signal boosting each other, paving the way for new ones. I became a one-woman empire, surrounded by legions of psycho fans. The chat was fake. Some may think of it as a dissociative identity disorder, but that's bullshit. Everyone has online alter egos they buried. I just resurrected them, gave birth to new ones, and let them crossbreed. Her constant tapping at the phone, even during the show, Somehow she is capable of impersonating an entire chat room. I don't even have a self that could dissociate or be mentally ill. I'm a host, a living database. I live because I find it fun to be an information conduit, to process trends and support the ones I deem worthy. There was no masquerade violation. She was showing off her skills all along. She put you in a world of pure fiction, same way she was testing you back when she attacked you from the back. Damn, she's good at this. Of course, you can just imagine what I'm saying and decide I'm just another deranged Malkavian. But hey, annihilation of the self is the only way to survive in the 21st century. If there ever was an era that demanded images of beautiful people transcending beyond humanity and inspiring others to do the same, it's this one. Although for now, because of the masquerade, my audience is quite limited. Speaking of, you want to be the star of my next movie? Ah, uh, let's say we're rolling with it. I, I don't care, y'all. Sure, why not? 
I have a hunch you're just saying that. Still, hey, in a way, this too is transcending beyond self. But yeah, the test is over. Now the question is, do I want to work with you? She put away her phone for the first time since you met her and gives you a good hearted look. Guess I can give it a shot, yeah. You're not that dumb, you're not that boring, and you're kind of cute. Don't worry, no more modding jobs. Mods get attached, and that's always bad news. Emily. <laughs> She grabs your arm and starts leading you out of the room. I've put you through enough shit. Next time, I'll let you in on a little job I'm doing. We'll hit the streets and you'll see why Sophie told you to contact me. She leads you through a labyrinth of gray corridors. It's a different route than, you, than the one you made your way through in. The city is so much more than what its elite consider real. Stick with me and I'll guide you to places Camarilla elders couldn't reach in a hundred years. She'll lead you out of the building and into back alleys. Even if someone else rules the streets, we will rule the information highways. This is the power of hope. She lets out a theatrical laugh you don't even notice when she leaves you alone. You assume everything went as well as it could. A new ally. The power of hope. As you walk off into the night, everything around you feels a little less tangible than it did a few hours ago. Yo! That was awesome! I love her so much. Oh, that was... That was Jeanette and Therese Vorman made, like, Millennial, and that's everything I could have hoped for. Oh, I'm so genuinely happy. Oh, I love her so much. Okay, we're going to do some animal crackers, and y'all can vote on who I go to see next. So we got a Tremere. So let's see our options. So we have... It's kind of magic. Uh, Sophie's mention of a vampire clan and blood sorcerer sparked your attention. One of them, Agathon, could potentially be your introduction to the bizarre powers of the Tremere. Jezebel's Childer. Sophie mentioned a gangrel neonate by the name of Tamika, who's made herself a haven in Prospect Park. The ferals aren't exactly a social bunch, even by kindred standards, but if you can keep her from clawing your eyes out just long enough, she might be persuaded to join you. Gumshoe in the Dark. A recent string of violent killings has the Red Hook district of Brooklyn on edge. Sophie mentioned that Kadir al Azmai has a secret associate investigating the murders, a Nosferatu neonate by the name of D'Angelo. If you help him out, he might be persuaded to form a lasting partnership. Also, Faith and Myth, Part 1. You received an invitation to meet a mysterious someone at the Cathedral of St. John and Divine. So who shall we go see? I'm going to let everyone have a moment where I am going to eat some animal crackers while you guys decide on who I'm going to go meet. Okay. So it's two for Tremere, one for Gangrel. One for going to the church. Y'all have a minute. I'm gonna eat another animal poker. Yeah, I think the church is core plot, so let's meet someone that is not at the church. 
I keep breaking these crackers inside the cookie butter. Dang it. Alright, two people have said gangrel. So I'm going to do that. This was the gag roll. Tamika. Dogs again. That must be... If it was UPS earlier, that must be FedEx. So I have a feeling we have time for one more before we have to go to sleep. Let's start with Gangrel. I want to see Tamika. Let's just get both the queens out of the way. You're making your way through the Grand Army Plaza, passing the Soldiers and Sailors Memorial Arch. You can't help but feel a tinge of nostalgia as you picture the place as you've seen it countless times, in broad daylight, teeming with life. You quickly get over it and pass through the Northwest Gate into Prospect Park. The park is its usual maze of unkempt foliage and dimly lit alleys. Silence hangs in the air as it would at this time of night, and there doesn't appear to be any sign of kindred presence. You start to suspect Langley's sources fed her a bunch of bullshit, but you're not willing to give up just yet. The dogs are excited about the prospect of a gang girl? Yeah, probably. You take a deep breath. Your nostrils fill with the scent of dead leaves and something else. A faint whiff of copper, too subtle for a human to notice, but your newfound kindred intuition tells you that you're in the right spot. Yeah, these are Tamika's hunting grounds, all right. It's more than a hunch. You can feel it in your veins. Now it's only a matter of finding her. Unless, of course, she finds you first. <coughs> As you ponder your options, you hear footsteps coming from behind a line of trees. Quick but evenly paced, most likely a late night jogger. No vampire would take kindly to you feeding in their domain, but then again, perhaps you could kill two birds with one stone. All right. Feeding opportunity, midnight jogger, or Auspex, focus your senses to locate Tamika. I feel like we're not going to start off on a good foot if I just, like, immediately start feeding in her domain for her to come out. Yeah, auspex, auspex. Because um, we don't have the blood around the edges of the screen yet, so we're not hungry. Uh... The world opens up around you like a blood-scented flower. A myriad of smells and sounds pound your senses like a battering ram. You focus, trying to drown out the noise and isolate any trace of your quarry. And there it is. A rustling of leaves, no farther than a hundred yards to the south. Too big for an animal, too quiet and meticulous for a human. You follow the sound, careful not to make a spectacle of yourself. Even at this heightened state, tracking one of the outcasts seems like a tricky matter. From what you can tell about them, the hunter is never more than a few steps from becoming the hunted. All of a sudden, the rustling stops. The world goes eerily silent. By the time you realize something is wrong, it's already too late. Hunter, hunted. In a split second, the air by the side of your head swirls like a vortex. Driven by sheer instinct, you lean back just as five finger-shaped razors cut through the darkness, missing your face by an inch. Oh shit! Oh shit! Oh shit! Ah! Okay, sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. A clawed shadow jumps back a few paces, preparing to correct its mistake. You catch a glimpse of the assailant. Looks pretty animalistic, all right, but he's not the one you're looking for. For starters, it's a he. Just as he's about to lunge at you, a snarl resounds from the bushes nearby, stopping your foe in their tracks. Out of the shadows emerges a young woman, baring her teeth ever so slightly. She walks over calmly, her eyes fixed on your assailant. 
Her presence is enough to make him reconsider attacking you, but not to withdraw completely. He glances over to her, puffing up his chest. Oh, this dude looks so cool! Oh my god! Oh, I love him! I ha ha! He's so hot! Okay. Welcome to my stream, where I am thirsty for every character in Coteries of New York. Ah, he is so hot. Okay. I love the band tattoo, the over here. I'm like, we're on this side. <laughs> uh, Alright. Stay out of it, Tam. I smelled him first. Tam, how about that? She raises an eyebrow, but remains silent. Her compatriot turns back towards you. Shouldn't have come here, pretty boy. I'm gonna fuck you up so bad you'll be wearing your tongue as a fucking necktie. Tamika looks at you expectantly. Easy there, I'm not looking for a fight, or so you can bark, let's see you bite. Do we want to go the calm approach, or do we want to go the antagonistic approach? We got two options here. Uh, all you missed is we met, uh, we're at the park looking for Tamika, and, uh, while we were looking, some gangrel motherfucker is starting to fight. I'm a soft boy, let's go option one. Easy there, big shot, you made your point, okay? Confirm badass, I'm not looking for a fight. Tamika tilts her head in a way that's barely noticeable, and yet strangely expressive. She seems disappointed. The man loosens up, his lips twisting into a wry smile. Clearly you just gave him the confidence boost he needed. Figures, you got that look about you. All style, no substance. Didn't even have a smell to you. I know a sissy when I see one. <laughs> well, guess what? You ain't getting off that easy, chicken shit. A fierce growl echoes across the alley, stopping the savage in his tracks. Tamika walks over to her comrade, her fangs glistening in the dim lamplight. She puts her hand on the side of his head, caressing her hair and tugging at his ear, as if she was scolding a puppy. She leans over and speaks to him in a voice that's firm, yet oddly affectionate. It's okay, Raul. I'll handle it from here. She's gorgeous! My god! She... Ah! Tamika! I am but a poor Malkavian. Please marry me. Ah! I'm in love. They've... Ah! All these characters are so dynamic and so beautiful, and I love them. Uh, okay. The male gangrel looks at her with a mix of timidity and resentment. Then he turns back towards you. Fine. They're not worth the effort anyway. Having said his piece, Raoul retreats into the shadows, although if you were to guess, he's likely to stay within earshot. With her companion gone, Tamika turns to you once more. What do you want? Just look at this queen. Just look at her. We're gonna take a minute. We're just gonna take a minute and appreciate and love Tamika Gangrel. Mm. Mm-mm-mm. Hmm. Of her. She's so beautiful. Oh my gosh. Okay. Straight to the point. I like that. I could use your help. Better put Alicia the. Why are there such rude options? All right. Uh, let's go with I could use your help. Um, because that's that's more honest, and I feel like like. What do you want? She doesn't want to be complimented on it. Because straight to the point, I like that, isn't an answer. She wants an answer right now. Short story. I'm new here. I'm looking for a chance to leave my mark. Maybe shake things up a bit in the process. I could use your help. Why me? We go name drop like a motherfucker in here. My sources claim you're capable. Are they wrong? No, I guess not. But if you're so well informed, you should know that I don't whore myself out for mercenary work. 
is different or I'm not hiring. This one I'll let you guys pick. Are we saying this is different or are we saying I'm not hiring? I'm not hiring feels kind of rude, but I do feel like at this point she she really wants like the assertive answer. Okay, everyone's saying two. Do you guys mean not hiring or do you mean the one that's in spot number two? Because some of y'all have said one. Not hiring. Okay, okay. I'm not hiring you. I'm offering you my help should you ever need it and in time perhaps also my friendship. Do I strike you as someone who needs a friend? That third option! Rude as hell! You can't just say that to people! You can't just say your sire abandoned you to people! Good God. And we'll crack the break. Looking for a way out does seem like a good, a good avenue. Um, let's see here. Let's see. Yeah, let's do the middle one. You're looking for a way out. That feels like the better one. You strike me as someone looking for a way out. Out of this park, for starters. Hmm. Is that why you're here? To break me out? Are you my ticket out of here? I feel like we, we ain't got the fucking confidence to be like, yeah, I'm your way out. I'm the one who's going to save you. No. Like, you can leave either way. Yeah, with or without me. Look, I'm not stupid. I know you can leave any time, with or without me. I'm just asking for a couple nights of your time. So what's it going to be? For a brief moment, she stands there, motionless, looking straight into your eyes as if trying to size you up. Finally, she looks away, like she's come to a decision. Just so that we're clear, I don't trust you. I have no reason to. Frankly, you sound more lost than I am. Still, there's something about you. Most kindred who are in this pretty tent who are this pretty tend to hide rot underneath but i don't smell it on you oh sorry that uh that off put me for a minute because she's calling me pretty yes queen thank you for calling me pretty tamika <laughs> so i'll give you a chance to prove yourself I have some outstanding business to take care of. I'll let you know once that's done. Meet me here, and we'll see what you're really made of. And with that, Tamika disappears into the night. That went pretty well, all things considered. Ooh! You're close to daylight hours. Alright, so we're gonna take a rest, because it's almost time for the sun. Not long after you wake up tonight, Gregory knocks on the door of your apartment. Oh! Who? Who let Gregory be this fine? 
I need to know why why Gregory this handsome and is he immortal like good god is Philip that fine no no Philip's adorable Philip's actually really cute he's like baby face cute you think she'd have an ugly driver you know what that's that's entirely fair Sophie is a Toreador. She would only have the hotties as her driver. All right. Miss Langley wants to see me. Do you know what she needs me for? What if I don't want to see her? Rude. She's your stepsire. Have some respect. Well, my freedom was good while it lasted. Uh, we're going with option one. That's, you know. Any idea what she needs me for? I'm not in position to ask. He smiles politely. The car is waiting. Shall we? You wrestle with the same thoughts as a few nights ago. Maybe you should just leave. Disappear. Let Sophie find someone else to employ. But then you remember the Anarch thug being cut down by Kadir, and how close you were to the same fate not even a week ago, and that it might still happen if you step out of line. You follow suit. As with your previous visit here, Sophie seems not entirely present when you enter. Her eyes are locked onto one of the paintings in the room. Sorry, I was looking at the details in this dynamic background, like the lights changing when a car drives by. It's just really nice and I really like it. You're pretty sure it was here earlier, but she's behaving as if she's seeing it for the first time in her life entirely entranced. Gregory clears his throat. Sophie turns to the both of you, a bit of irritation in her countenance that soon gives way to a pleasant, warm smile. <coughs> also, I'm really loving the chat just reading Anton for filth right now. Uh, Anton has two moves in any given situation, and they're flirt and climb wall. <laughs> Sometimes he does melt lock. Honestly, the memes that have come out of the fandom for ATL by Night have been one of my favorite things. You guys are so funny. <laughs> I, I try to read the chat on the break and then I rewatch the show the next day so that I can read everyone in the chat and I just crack up the whole time. I love you guys so much. You're here. Excellent. Thank you, Gregory. Her driver leaves and she turns her attention to you. I hope you had a good few nights and made some new acquaintances, but I have to say, I'm happy to see you, Lamar. Thank you for coming. The change in mood of the room is so sudden and startling, it makes you consider the true power of vampiric charisma. Rationally, you know you're being manipulated, but you don't even care. Her eyes, her motion, her entire body language all feel 100% genuine in expressing legitimate interest in you and your well-being. I have a request for you this night. I need you to find somebody for me and make a delivery. She points to the statue at the side of the room. You notice a plain looking flash drive lying on the edge where the inanimate archer's bow touches the pedestal. Oh, right there. The man you'll be looking for calls himself Kaiser. He has eyes and ears all over New York and it's rare for something to happen here without his knowledge. Does he own a string of hospitals? Does he have a, does he have a partner named Permanente? Just an Atlanta joke, sorry. Actually, I think those hospitals are everywhere, so. Just niche Kaiser Permanente humor, I guess. I'll need you to take this flash drive and bring it to him. In exchange, he will give you an address which I need to know as soon as possible. You're about to ask what's on the drive, but Sophie proves to be one step ahead of you. 
Oh, don't worry about the contents. They're encrypted. A precaution if the data falls into the wrong hands. But it won't, correct? She gives you a smile that just a handful of nights ago would have made you feel like melting. Also, I'm getting read in the chat now. Lamar getting hit with awe is just Ellie being faced with literally anybody in this game. <laughs> it's true! <laughs> It's so true. It's so very true. It's gonna beat me with Bloodlines too. They're gonna watch me uh, fawn over McStabby. <sighs> All right. Oh, and Lamar, Kaiser is a Nosferatu, that twisted, deformed lineage of kindred. He is old, and his age has made him even more paranoid than others of his clan tend to be. He holds many havens and changes them often. From what I've gathered, he or one of his servants should be found at the park on Coney Island tonight. You'll have to identify them somehow. I'm told Kaiser has spent many of his nights these past few years being driven around the city in a black limo. Maybe keep an eye out for it. A smile again, but much shorter. Anything more for Kaiser? What do you need to trade with Kaiser? Why don't you look for Kaiser? That's rude. Uh, I feel like questioning why is also not good. Like, this is our stepsire. She's asking us for a favor. Why are we questioning it? Yeah, one. Let's just ask for any more information. Anything more you can tell me about Kaiser? He's been here a long time, about as long as I have. He got into a lot of trouble for exchanging information with both the Anarchs and the Camarilla in the past, but ultimately got off scot-free. <clears throat> Kaiser's web of information proved to be strong enough to shield him from the consequences of playing both sides. Some say that's the best proof of his abilities. In any case, be careful when talking to him. He's very particular about everyone's etiquette except his own. Good night, and good luck. She flashes at least once, one last smile at you and turns back to the painting, clearly done with the conversation. You pocket the flash drive and head out towards Coney Island. It takes you the better part of an hour to reach the lights and sounds of the Coney Island amusement park from the city. The drive is almost pleasant this time of night. Thank God for Belt Parkway. <laughs> that feels very uh, New York specific. Any New Yorkers in the chat can tell me if that's uh, some accurate stuff. Oh God, this looks so cool. I love this. Ah! Look at this graffiti of little vampire fangs! Ah! <laughs> I love it. Little little sneaky things. And a boo from Mario. Oh, this is neat. There are plenty of people here tonight, but nobody who stands out as a traveling purveyor of secrets. Then again, if they did stand out, it would be kind of pointless, right? Nothing to do but figure out the right approach. Ask around for Kaiser, search for signs of Kaiser. Auspex, baby! We're gonna need to feed soon. Yeah, let's open our senses, because, like, he's also in a limo. So we can listen out for the car. Take a moment to focus and try and pick up on any details that would help you with locating Kaiser. Initially, the noise from the nearby amusement park floods your mind and momentarily stuns you. A child's crying, the loud bang of a car door closing, the bright old school logo of the Cyclone roller coaster all overload your senses. You have to lean on a nearby booth to stay upright. You regain control, start walking, listening in, taking in the sights and smells, looking for something, anything to point you in the right direction. A man talking on his phone. A snippet of conversation. Clean the uh, red stuff from the garage. Tidied up in general. The limo will fit for sure. Come on. Don't be like that, boss. I didn't mean to. 
Yes, I know. I am. It's a privilege, Mr. K. Sir. The call ends. The man tucks the phone away. It's a fancy model. It doesn't look like anything readily available on the market. It doesn't fit the guy's rugged looks at all. He notices you. Oh. That's a ghoul, baby! Hey, what you looking at, huh? Or he might be a Nosferatu, but I think he's cool. You're just the guy I was looking for! I feel like dropping Kaiser's name at any point right now is a bad idea. <coughs> like, Kaiser's paranoid. If I just said his name out loud, he would flip his shit. Okay. Just the guy I was looking for. Care to call your boss again for me? Huh? No, I think you heard wrong. Piss off. Ooh. Tell him Sophie sent you. Listen, I was sent here by Sophie Langley. She has something for Kaiser. I need to contact him and hand it over. Nothing more to it. God, that was the... That wasn't how I wanted to say that. That's the bane of me with anything that, it, that has dialogue options is it doesn't matter what option I choose, it winds up being how I don't want to say it. Like, I would have said that way more codedly, like, I have been sent here by a woman named Sophie, I was told specifically to find you, I have something to give you. I wouldn't just say, I was sent by Sophie Langley to look for Kaiser while we're at it. Let's just, like, call MTV and do a Cribs episode from the inside of the Nosferatu Haven. Like, why not? Oh my god. He sees the doubt in your face. Fuck it. Stay right there. He produces his phone. It's a fancy model. Doesn't look like anything red. I already said that. Unlocks it. Dials a number. Two tones go by. A voice on the other end. Sorry to bother you again, boss. Yeah, I know how much you need your alone time. That sounds very nice. I, um, somebody here who wants to see you. They're with... Langley? Sophie Langley. Yeah. A string of loud obscenities fill the phone. The man winces and pushes it away from his ear, and then the call stops. Almost immediately, a chime. The Count's laugh from the Sesame Street. Wow. Oh! Ah! His text tone is, ah, 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 ah. That's fucking hilarious. <laughs> I like a ghoul with the sense of humor. All right. He's, um, on his way. Don't go anywhere. The inside of the limo used to be a luxury lounge. The guy with a stripper pole and a bar full of alcohol. Ugh. But it currently has none of that. Instead, there are monitors and consoles. There are dozens of displays, each one showing something different. Surveillance camera footage, stock market quotes, television news, emails, tweets, silent movies, lo-fi footage of a gory torture session. You wonder if the limo's owner can focus on anything while surrounded by all this visual noise and then realize there's nobody there. Or is there? A man blinks into existence on a leather-covered couch, attempting to maintain something that approximates a regal presence. You're 100% sure. It's Kaiser. Show me the boy! Surrounded by dimly lit computer screens, he fe his features are even more ghastly than you imagined. All sharp angles of twisted bone, mangled flesh, and crooked teeth. He bears them in an awful parody of a smile. All right, let's see if I fall in love. The doors close behind you. Oh, this looks cool as shit. Oh my God. I want a limo that's like this inside. Fuck. Thomasina. Thomasina, we're getting you a new car. <laughs> Philip, fuck gas mileage. We're getting Thomasina a new car. This is slick. exactly what I was picturing. Ah, uh, I love him. Oh, boss husband. Ah, I love him. I love him. I love him. I love him. Okay. 
So, the waste of good blood outside tells me Sophie Langley sent you, huh? You got something for me? You reluctantly pull the flash drive from your pocket and slowly pass it to Kaiser. He plugs in into a USB port on the arm of his chair and displays the data on one of the screens that happened to be turned away from you. It takes him about a minute to access the data. Who do you people think I am? I saw this footage a week ago. He removes the flash drive and throws it back at you in disgust. Tell Sophie the deal's off. She wants her address, she can give me something else. Ooh. <coughs> okay, this is the one time I feel like presence is the wrong idea. It's the wrong... Uh, I don't think we should force him. I think we should appeal to him. Like, dude, please give me a break. Come on. Yeah, do not. We're not doing present. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Presence is the worst idea in this situation. Uh, let's just let's just beg. We're just gonna beg. Come on, give me a break. Heck, we have known that you'd already seen this material. I chose one, y'all. I'm doing that dumb bitch juice. I told y'all last time. He gives you a patronizing look. Kid, you're new here, so I'll pretend I didn't hear that. You want your address? You're gonna have to work for it. I have just the idea. Yeah, something appropriate for an eager fledgling like yourself. More on that soon. Stay tuned. Now get the fuck out. You're pretty sure you're done here. You get out, close the door behind you, and the car immediately starts backing up. The opaque windows slide past you and soon the limo is on its way. Kaiser's lackey is nowhere to be seen, so you make your way to the car to your car and drive back, wondering what tomorrow brings. We have the option to go see my girl Hope again. <laughs> All right, we probably, so because of the time of day and the time of day in the real world, oh, stretch, we probably have the option for one more. So we will go see one more person so y'all can vote on the one more person we go see. And then we'll call it a day. And then tomorrow, bloodlines. Which one was it say? Hope is about to head into the city. Accompany her and see her true face. Ooh. Go fight to beacon for dominance. Oh, church boy. Okay, yeah, let's go see church boy. You haven't been to a church since you became a vampire. <laughs> you mean like a week ago? <laughs> Or kindred, as the euphemism goes. You've had to focus on concrete, practical things like survival and feeding. You've learned the essentials of the vampire experience, but you don't really have a clear idea of what it all means. The cathedral- Oh, this is my phone lock screen! The Cathedral of St. John the Divine is a New York landmark. You've been inside once before when you were much younger. You marveled at its gothic facade. Here, I gotta- let me clear the notifications off my screen and I will show you guys that this is currently my phone's wallpaper because it is available. Yeah, it's available. Uh, if you go to the Coteries of New York website, they have some beautiful phone wallpapers. I didn't realize this was the church. I love that. Looking at it now from across the street, it feels ominous. Was it the red light? Is the red light what did it for you, Lamar, my dumb bitch? The prospect of an anonymous invitation to a secret meeting is a worrying one, but the venture, the, the venture, <laughs> but the venue is well chosen. It's hard to imagine a violent attack in a place like this with eyes everywhere. You enter the cathedral discreetly. You quickly learn this is an essential skill for a vampire. How to move without anyone noticing you. 
The full force of the cathedral's architecture hits you as you walk between the pews. If the architect meant to create the feeling of being small in the face of God's glory, mission accomplished. Based on the note, you're assuming that whoever you're meeting is somewhere in the front. As you step closer to the high altar, it feels as if something is dragging at your feet, as if the stone beneath you resisted your movement. Mm. Religion is superstition. Vampires are satanic creatures, or does God still listen to you? Mm. I think let's go with does God still listen to you? I just, it's so ominous. I really like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's do this one. It's been a long time since you prayed. You wonder whether God listens to creatures like you. Fatalistically, you take a step, then another. You're not sure if your God is present in this cathedral, but perhaps it doesn't matter. What you feel is real enough. There's an old man sitting in the front. You see only the back of his head, bowed down in silent prayer. Your footsteps echo on the floor, and he turns to look at you. You can't take your eyes off him. He's tall, dignified, white hair balding, a few strands escaping the sides, He's wearing glasses and simple clerical clothing. His eyes are warm and pale, too kind for someone like you. Something is wrong. You feel heavy, as if a giant hand was pressing you down, the skin on your face is burning. Perhaps unconsciously, you expected something like this, as a vampire walking into a cathedral. Only it's not the building or God making you feel like you're burning alive. It's the man, the priest. He's so intimidating. Ah. Oh. oh, he's so spooky. I love it. Ah, oh, true faith. True faith. I love when true faith shows up. All right. Welcome, my child. The priest tone is kind, but the rising panic inside is telling you that the kindness is not for the likes of you. Run or confront. We have to confront the priest. We have to. Like, we have to get answers. The only way to understand these painful feelings is to push forward and confront the priest. As you step closer to the priest, panic rises inside of you. The emotions are hard to control. Fear, anger, pain, all trying to wrestle you in different directions. Away. Can I help you? Are you okay? The priest talks to you like he would a lost vagrant who has chosen to enter the house of God. Oh. Ah. Oh man, I really dig the use of true faith here. Oh. I don't want to ask how he's doing this. <laughs> Let's go with I'm sorry, Father. Is, I like the, the emotion that this is giving. I'm sorry, Father. I'm so sorry. It's alright. Do you wish to pray? It's simply too much. You mutter something incoherent in reply. You don't sound like a vampire. An undead being made powerful by immortal blood. You're just another sad, confused, lost soul. You turn around and stagger away only feeling like yourself once you're back on the street outside. You stand on the sidewalk, confused and scared. No enemies seem to be attacking you. The priest didn't follow you. The night air is wet with smells of the city, the same as every night. How did it feel? Look at this beatnik motherfucker. I love him. What a shocker. I like every character that comes up. <laughs> Look, draw distance. That was, oh. True faith can, like, if you utilize it right, it's so terrifying. It's so genuinely terrifying. And, like, mm, I love it. Okay. You look at the man speaking to you. He's well-dressed, if a little archaic, dark-haired, handsome, like a character from an old movie. He smiles as if he knows something you don't. You glance around. There are people on the street. You don't appear to be in immediate danger. Ooh. 
Why does it hurt so much? Sorry, y'all. I'm blowing through these options because I'm just like, I'm enthralled by this. Why does it hurt so much? That's the question I wanted to talk to you about. Let me introduce myself. My name is Benoit Segal. We share many things in common, if you, even if you don't know me. Benoit offers his hand to you. Uh, let's just shake hands. Let's just shake hands. I, I feel also we have used a lot of powers without feeding, and I feel like we're starting to like. We're starting to get like, on the edge. Benoit's handshake is firm and dry. He looks at you intently, as if he's trying to find something in your eyes. Would you mind sitting with me for a moment? Benoit points to a park bench nearby, in darkness because of a broken streetlight. Wary, you decide to follow him. Only an enemy totally unconcerned with the masquerade would attack you here. Benoit sits down and you follow suit. For a moment, you both contemplate the cathedral in silence. I know how it feels. What you just felt. I have experienced it myself many times. For a moment, you consider how to respond. It's clear Benoit set the invitation to come here and orchestrated this little setup. What's the point? Why did you go to the trouble of getting me here? We share a connection, you and I. I'll explain it later, but right now the important thing is that it's so much easier to show than to tell. Is he, like, your brother? Because if he was your brother, that'd be cool as hell. Just saying. I wanted you to meet Father Anthony. Or see him. Experience him. Did you wonder why it felt like that? At first I thought it was because I was in a church, but then I realized it came from him, the priest. I think you're right. It does come from him. It's his faith that makes you feel like that. He's safe in his belief while you are one of the damned. Do you ever wonder what's the role of a vampire in God's creation? You stop to think, of course you've wondered what this is all about, whether it's about God or nature don't really know what being a vampire means. That's the trouble with the masquerade. A human faced with a human problem can go online and find something that helps. You can't. The masquerade means that everything there is to know about your condition is secret, hidden away. You're left relying on the unreliable opinions of people like Benoit. Suddenly Benoit takes your hand and presses it against his chest. As he stares into your eyes, you feel his heart stop. My heart no longer beats, yet I move, I talk. Is that how God intended us to be? No, he didn't. I know he didn't. This was wrong. Yes, I agree. The question is, can there be salvation for the likes of us? Sometimes I'm skeptical too. But in Father Anthony's presence, I know faith is real. I know it because it hurts so much, but perhaps you have questions about faith and dark high. Uh, yes. What are we? There is the usual story, which most of us believed, especially before modern times. Cain was the first murderer. As punishment, God cursed him to walk in darkness and carry his mark. Cain passed on this curse as he drank the blood of the living, and thus we were born. God's curse passed on to someone new with each embrace. Maybe it's true. We all have our lineages, our sires, and the sires of our sires. If you trace those lineages all the way to the top, you find Cain, the original vampire. I suppose God is cruel. The curse perpetuates itself, leading to new evils. <laughs> This is a lot to take in. All these myths. Hard to know what to believe. I know it's overwhelming. It was for me when I first met Father Anthony. I know there are others like him, whose faith shines like a beacon. Priests, 
old ladies, children, anyone can have that conviction inside them. This is too much. You expect me to go along with all this insanity? Benoit nods patiently. Let's meet again, in a few nights, here at the cathedral. We can talk more after you've thought it through. You leave Benoit sitting in the shadow of the cathedral, contemplating what lies within. It would be easier to ignore his words without the reality of what you experienced. Father Anthony was holy. You know it to be true. But what does that mean? <sighs> yes, that is such a perfect spot to end the stream for this for this game because I will be back tomorrow with Bloodlines 2 or sorry Bloodlines 1 and I will be doing a Malkavian playthrough um so that you guys can experience that uh and I am going to let you guys choose the majority of my options um so this is going to be you guys playing through with me because I've played through it easily 30 times so i want to see the story that you guys create with me to play bloodlines so i'll be back tomorrow at 10 a.m we'll see you guys there you guys have a great rest of your day bye